today on the Justice Court. The plaintiff, Ayatira Deborah, is suing her husband for domestic violence. All right. Court in session. Honorable Judge Fumi Asaolu presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, this case is between Ayetira Deborah and Ayetira John. That is one of them. Thank you, Ashin. You're welcome, Your Honor. Ayetira Deborah. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me why you are here? You are here with your husband. Why have you brought your husband to court? I brought him to the court because of the domestic violence that we have been happening since, let me say, seven years ago. When did you get married to him? Since 2007. How many children do you have? I have three, but two is for him. I have one out of the marriage before we got married. For so, Madam. Ma. So when did it start? The, the it message? started immediately. I lost my mom in 2010. So the boy was staying with my mom then. So after I lost my mom, I have to bring him down to Lagos because he's schooling in Abuja. My mom, she's working in the Federal of Works and Housing in Abuja. So when she's late, I have to go and take the boy and bring him down to Lagos with me, to stay with me. Ever since the boy have came to the home, and he was the one that asked me to go and bring the boy, that the boy cannot stay with my siblings, that they, they will not look after him very well. So I, I took his advice. I traveled to Abuja after the barrier. I bring him down to Lagos. So immediately the boy came. He was complaining. The boy looks like Washoko, you know, all this sort of insult. And I called him, I said, well, I've not told you the secret of this boy since all this one. That is why I left his dad. The boy is sickle cell, and I cannot continue the marriage. That is why we went, I went on my own. I said, so, don't complain about him. He might sick today. He may be well tomorrow. That's the condition of their health. Because I've searched a lot on the internet, and I went to the hospital for their lectures. I said, that's why I didn't want to bring him down to Lagos before. I'd rather leave him with my mom because she knows how to take care of him. So he was complaining all, complaining all sorts of things about this boy. Sometimes he would complain that the boy bedwet and he would beat him. In fact, there was a day I went because I used to hawk. I was on, I was on the street hawking when someone called me that my boy has fainted though, that my husband beat him, that should come home. I have to run all the way from Kostin back to Ajegunle that day. I met my boy lying. I have to rush him to the hospital before they survive him. They say he beat him with one big stick, but I couldn't see the stick because by the time I got home back, I couldn't see any stick. But the, the, the eyewitness told me that he beat him very well before the boy got uh, fainted. So all these things have been, have been happening. So let me say 2014, 13 and 14, this boy used to complain that, Mommy, let me go back to Abuja and stay with your younger. I said, all of them have married. You cannot stay with them because of your condition. And I don't have parents which you can stay with. You have to stay with me. Right now, I don't know where your dad is. I can't find him. His younger brother that I knew that is in Abuja is late. So there is no way for me to find any of your father's family. So you have to stay with me. One day, I went out in search of job. Someone took me to Ikeja, that they need, they need their workers in one factory like that. Before I got home, someone called me that they saw my boy with poly bag with some clothes. That where is he going to? I said, I don't know, but I said they should just stop him when I come back. On getting home, I couldn't find my son. Since 2014, I could remember. I'm with, I'm with his three months old baby then. I saw my boy last year, November 13th, that one woman brought him to me. That she has been seeing this boy sleeping around, doing all sort of job. Sometimes he picked from the gutter to go and sell. Sometimes he pushed dirty. That because of she's a pastor, that's why she, that she saw some goodies in him. That why did I leave this? I said, I've been searching here and there. I went to several police stations. I even took his picture to many uh, police stations that they should search this boy from this. They can't find him. But I know 
and my hope in God that one day this boy will return to me. By the time he came, he was with sore on his two leg. What happened? He said he didn't know that suddenly the leg just got swollen up. To his own understanding, he took it to one uh, chemist man, that the man has been taking care of the leg. That was the chemist man that now told him that he should go to the hospital. That he went to one, I don't know, he just said at Yanoba, that one hospital like that. That they now told him that his uh, cancer saw. So he has been just treating you. Sometimes he buy all those uh, small, small distance from the chemist to just clean the wound. So ever since this boy, I took after him. The day I even came, that he, because he don't normally stay home, normally traveled. Sometimes I was on travel one week, two weeks. So when he and I came, I saw this boy. He said that he told me that this boy ran out of the house, that he's, he has joined Agbero Gang, that he don't want to see him. We fight over this thing. He sent me out for like four days, which I slept in the church with this boy. So after a while, the pastor called him. They talked to him. He agreed. So when we came back, I've been battling with this leg. So they said that February, February 9th of this year, he fainted because of this leg, because the leg was bleeding. I went to hawk at my two before I come back. I didn't meet anybody at home. And I said, oh, nobody's at home. Where are my children? So my neighbor now told me that your son fainted, though, that they rushed him to one nearby hospital. So she told me then I ran there because I was not with my phone that day. So getting there, the doctor told me that there's nothing I could do, that he's going to refer us to Ajero um, General Hospital. So I went there, I took Keke, we went there. On getting there again, they said no, they should take him to General Hospital or done at Lagos Island. That is where they now admitted they placed him on emergency for a week. After a week, they refer us to the ward. So we were in the, at the ward for like three weeks. My husband couldn't even say, how is this voice said? All you could do is to call me, complain that I left his children at home, this and this, and those are the complaints. Even, I cannot move an inch. Even sometimes I'll be there, hockey will call me. They called him that they saw me this, 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 with a man. I said, no, I'm on the street hawking. I'm selling my goods. I'm not with man. By the time I will come home, either he beats me or he locks the door against me. Sometimes I sleep at the passage, sometimes I sleep in the church, sometimes I even sleep at the street. Sometimes for like two, three days before I would now go around to look for elderly ones, which I could talk to them so that they would talk to him so that he could allow me to come in. So all these things have been going on. Why I even brought him here is because of my boy. These few days that he sent that boy out of the house, that I don't want to see him, that this cancer, cancer is smelling, that the boy is smelling like a dead rat, which he has been complaining here and there. My pastor have talked to him, many people have talked to him. He said no. That was then, and I said that if I know that I don't, want, I don't want this boy to leave his house, then I should live with him. I should live with the boy that should go and leave his house. So all these things I've been sleeping around since all these were sometimes, if I know that he's coming home, I will ask the boy to just go and find a place and sleep, either with, his, with my friends or in the church, sometimes in the mocks. I will go and beg them that, please, I want this boy to stay with you people here for like two days. That the husband which I married said I don't want to see him. So those are the things that I've been facing since all this while. That is why I brought him here. I don't want to see my boy. And I took this boy to the hospital and the doctor said that they are going to work on his leg. That's burnt and plastic surgery, which will cost me 1.2 million. Where will I see 1.2 million? I don't even have 1,000. Even by coming here today, I have to go and beg for transport before coming here. So this, my husband, has not be even be considering me. There is no really considering that uh, this woman, she's trying to put the marriage in place. Because since all this, I'll be avoiding, I'll be avoiding to leave my marriage. Because the first one I leave, I don't even leave it intentionally. If not, that the boy is SS. I don't want to lose my marriage, but this man has pushed me to the wall. So please, I don't know how you people can help me. Because he's not even participating, taking care of this boy every day. I spent 2,200 because dressing the leg, I have to take him to General Hospital in Nigeria, which they would dress the leg. 
I buy bandage, every blessed day, four bandage. And, do, and I used to buy dressing pack, 1,000, every blessed day. When I, anytime that I did not have money to dress this leg, truly the leg smells, but sometimes when I talk to him, that please help me, I need money to dress this boy leg. He has been smelling, I don't want him to be smelling among people. Sometimes he will take it up. Along the line, my luck is not against me that I will have to go and find a place and sleep with this boy outside for like two or three days. So I'm sick and tired of this marriage. I'm sick and tired of this marriage. What do you have to say to this? My Lord, uh, according to what she said, I can say that uh, just 50% uh, of the words is lie. Lie by the 50%. That's why I asked you. I said, what's your response to this? Let so me hear your own side I don't, of this thing. I've told her. But I think is someone is, uh, I think maybe there is someone behind of her that he already be instigate her. Because the beginning of our marriage is not like this. So you just get to sometimes just change to me totally. How did she change? What was she doing or not doing before that? She yeah, she yeah, doing many things. Like that, what? You have to mention. You know, some writing. She, she will do a right thing at the wrong time, wrong thing at the right time sometimes. So, I can't even understand. I can't understand. Even I myself, I'm fed up. I'm fed up. There is one day that even I want to go and kill myself. So, it's better now maybe I should just go apart to my side and she can stay apart. Outside, through all my strength and my struggling, is zero. There is no any appreciation. So, can't even talk more. But I know that uh, she has already changed to me totally. The plaintiff, Ayetira Deborah, left her first marriage because the son from the marriage has sickle cell disease. She claims that since she brought her son to live with her, the husband she is married to now started being violent towards her and her son. Her husband told her to choose between sending the boy away from the house or ending the marriage. The defendant, John, agrees that he married Deborah, being fully aware of the fact that she has a child from her first marriage. But now, he cannot stand the boy being around him. Deborah is sick and tired of the mistreatment from John. Judge Fumi waits into this matter. I have not said anything. She has changed, she has changed. Nothing to back it up. You say she has changed. You have not said anything, nothing. You say somebody has changed, you can't say this is what she has done. She says so many things, you can't say what she said is not right. I didn't beat this, the child. I didn't send, the, send that packing. I didn't ask her to go out, didn't lock her out. I, you have not said anything. She, she has said that, my lord, she has said that now that I'm beating the, the son, which is lie. Before you married her, did she tell you that she had a child before? Yes. She told you? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you accept to marry her at that time, even with that child? I agree. When the mother died, did you ask her to bring the child to Lagos? I'm not, I'm not even told her. You don't remember? I'm not told her. You didn't ask her? You didn't ask her to? Okay. But you knew she had a child somewhere. I knew that child was with her mother. Yes. And you knew her mother died? Yes. So when her mother died, where, was, where else would her child go? I say she, she where do you expect that child to go? Because the child has not even given me rest of mind. How? <laughs> In what? He, he, How? I can say that she is, he's a stubborn boy. How? You know, even in our streets, he, he will just... Maybe when he come to house, be just doing some things, a, a lot of things like that spoil my, my, my property. Like what? Which property did he spoil? Even there was one time that he spoiled the, the laptop. Um, no, I'm sorry, the uh, TV. Apart from uh, if I'm not even sending going to there, he will just go well and not even sending go. And your other children, they don't do that. 
they are don't you know I have right to 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 beat them as I like if they misbehave. But this one I can't even touch the her son because if I maybe if I just touch him or slap him, it will become to another thing. That maybe I'm not the I'm not their father. You see. You're, you are the father to that child, whether you like it or not. That's one thing you don't know. Because as long as you are married to the mother, all our children, they are children. If you had children before, and you are married and you are all living together, she's the mother to all the children in the house. That's the reality. You are a father. But you see, why this child is peculiar is because it's SS. Sickle cell, do you understand? So the way you handle others is not the way you handle him. But that doesn't mean you cannot, it's beyond reproach. He's a child, he must be guided. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to scold him. That's the role the two of you have. But you see, you can't beat a child to the point that the child will faint. It is wrong. Even if it's your own biological child. Do you understand what I'm saying? So even your own, the one that you think are your children, because it's only, not only that one that is your, as far as I'm concerned, all of them are your children. Even those ones, you can't beat them until they faint. It's wrong. That's extreme. Do you understand? Okay. So now that one is by the side. That's the way to relate to them. Then, what do you say she normally do or she doesn't do before? I don't know. Because you said she has changed. Because if you don't address that, if she doesn't know what it is, she will still be doing it and you will not be happy. Because before, when you started, this is not the way you started together. Is it the way you started together? You were happy. You don't want the two of you to be happy again. I'm asking you, do you want the two of you to be happy like before? I'm not even having trust more. You don't want to marry her again. That is the bottom line now. Has he told you this before? When was that? He told me when, immediately when I brought the boy back from the hospital that he doesn't want to see the boy, that he's not interested in the marriage. I was thinking maybe it was only joking, maybe he was just trying to pull my legs or try to threaten me. But these few days, I see it in him that he's, that he's very serious. Anytime that he traveled and come back, he always tell me that I still met you at home. I told you to pack your things and leave this as you are your son. So I've seen that the thing is very serious. To the extent that he asked him that he don't, don't, doesn't want to see the boy. Even coming here this morning with the boy, I have to go and bring him from the church. Because the boy has been sleeping in the church for like a month plus now. So how do you want to solve this? What's your own suggestion as to solution to what is on ground? The suggestion is that hmm? if she are not even step aside for me, I will step aside for them. Normally, even I'm not even current to the Lagos again now because I'm doing work up and down. What kind of work do you do? I'm doing bricklay. Okay. Um, and any time I... Do you take care of the children, the other children? I take care of both of them. All of them? my own capacity reach. She's not complaining about that. I'm just asking you. She didn't say you don't take care of everybody. Your only concern is over that particular song. And the way you treat the boy, that is it. That's a problem now. Do you want me to recommend the two of you to marriage counselor? You go there. If at the end of the day you still feel like this, that you don't want, no, nobody can force you. Do you understand? If after the four sessions, the, you still cannot live together, do you understand or continue with the marriage, then we address it at that stage. Do you understand me? But in the meantime, because of the injury you said you, your son and you are treating, because you spend money, the, the, the boy has an injury, right? Yes, he's here. He's here? Yes. How old is he? He's 25. That's an adult. Let him come in. What's your name? My name is Agwaji John Olamide. Agwaji John Olamide. How old are you? I'm 24 plus. So you're almost 25. 
You have a soul in your leg. Yes, ma. How did you get that soul in your leg? Uh, it started just like a boy. And I bust it. Uh, do I apply Uri? That shea butter? Yes. So I bust it. I pressed out the pause. And it just started to expand, expand escalate. So I turned to saw. And you've been taking it to the hospital? Yes, ma. Is it improving? Is it getting better? Is it the same? Although, early this year, when I got very sick, when they took me to hospital at Highland, Edo, it was improving. But due to, there's no money to continue to the treatments what the doctor asked us to buy. For now, it's not improving. What were you asked to buy then? How much was it? The materials we used to take care what of are the, the drugs. What the materials? Cotton, so, um, dressing, pack, uh, plaster. How often do you go? How often do you do that? Are you supposed to do that? The doctor asks us to every day. And it was improving when you were doing it every day then? Yes. So that time when you used to go to the hospital, how much were you paying every day? That's the 2,200 you were referring to? Yes. Or every day? Every day. Okay, we can go out. We can go. I have to rise up. All right. This matter is so emotional. Judge Fumi had to rise. She emphasizes with the boy's health situation and throws in a lifeline. Please be seated. So as I was saying, we go for four sessions of marriage counseling. Do you understand? Yeah. And in the meantime, um, you have to start treating the leg. Do you understand? Start treating the leg now. While you are doing the marriage counseling, I decide. So I provide money for you to start with. And with time, hopefully, and I believe we get more support to fully treat the leg. After the break, Judge Fumi rules. So the court will, my ruling, you go for the four sessions, four times, and revert back. Let's know your opinion after that. Do you understand? The court will give you 100,000 naira to start treating the leg, hopefully, so that if the leg heals, then you can get if something came fully, he can be gainfully employed and fend for himself as well, so there won't be a burden on the two of you. Do you understand? Because it appears that boy's situation is causing part of the problem you are seriously having in the relationship. And the best way to find a solution to, to that. Do you understand? Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's my grateful. All right. Have you been cheated or have a dispute and want justice? Don't take laws into your hands. Log on to www.thejusticecourt.com and submit your case.